Guys, there are nine simple poker strategies that all serious poker players know. These are some of the top strategies that I have used throughout my entire professional poker career, and I'm going to teach them to you today with step-by-step -step example hands. Let's jump into it. All right, so counting down from nine to one, number nine is having a good flop raising frequency. Guys, this is something that a lot of beginners and amateurs sleep on. And basically what I mean is they're not raising enough. I have found that the vast majority of players in small stakes games raise the flop around 10% of the time, which is not ideal. And the reason why is because when you're only raising such a small percentage of the time, you are basically broadcasting to the entire table that you have an over pair, you have top pair, you have two pair, you have something really strong. So guys, I would recommend raising the flop 20% of the time and you're going to have to do it with some bluffs. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So you've got ace, queen offsuit, ace of diamonds, queen of spades, and the flop comes down with a king of diamonds, 10 of spades, and seven of diamonds. So a lot of players would look at this flop and say, oh wow, I missed the flop again. See, I never hit the flop. Well guys, actually we've got two strong backdoor draws on this board, which are both to the nuts, by the way. And the nuts is just a slang term in poker for the best hand possible or one of the best hands possible. So in this situation, if it were to come with two running diamonds on the turn and river, it would make the nut flush because we have the ace of diamonds in our hands. And also if it were to come with a jack on the turn or river, we would make the nut Broadway straight, which by the way, if our opponent is holding a hand like queen nine, for example, is going to give us the higher straight straight. This is why I always harp in these videos, guys. You always want to be drawing at the nuts. If that jack comes, the person with queen nine is royally screwed. We're going to get all their money. So bottom line here, guys, you should be raising this flop sometimes. And what this is going to do is it's going to make you infinitely more difficult to play against because you have some bluffs in your range now when you raise the flop. And this is a pattern that you're going to see throughout all of the strategies on this list is we're becoming a better balance more difficult player to play against which is ultimately going to get you paid when you want it a lot of people come to me and they complain nathan when i get pocket aces or pocket kings nobody ever pays me off and then we look over their hands and i find out that there's no bluffs and that is why you're not getting paid off guys people are just reading you like a book learn to bluff raise in some spots like this and you're gonna have a lot more success let's talk about another bluff on the turn this time we're gonna talk about double barrel frequency. Now a double barrel is when you raise pre-flop and then you bet the flop and then you bet the turn. Now the biggest mistake that a lot of people make these days is they will bet the flop like 75% of the time, which is okay, you should be betting most of the time, but then they'll only follow it on the turn like 25% of the time. Once again, guys, any good thinking opponent is just going to read you like a book and they're gonna realize that you don't have anything when you don't bet again on the turn. So we wanna be upping that percentage just like we talked about on the flop and I would recommend betting the turn around 50% of the time. So as you already know, we're gonna have to do this with some bluffs, guys. And I should mention semi bluffs. I'm never doing this with nothing. So in this example, you've got Jack 10 of diamonds, you raise it up, the flop comes down with a nine of hearts, three of spades and seven of diamonds. Pretty good spot. We've got the gut shot to the nut straight if the eight were to come and we also have backdoor diamonds on this board. If it came diamond diamond, we would make an excellent flush by the river. So you bet they call pretty standard stuff. Let's go to the turn. So the turn comes down with the king of spades. So hopefully some of you savvy poker players have noticed that this gave us a double gutter straight draw meaning that we now have outs to the queen as well that would also give us the nut straight if that came down on the river. So this is a common situation, guys, where I'm going to be firing the second shell. Yes, you should absolutely be betting again here. And once again, guys, what we're doing here is we're upping our aggression levels, which makes us much more difficult to play against and ultimately gets us paid when we hit our hand. If it does come with a queen on the river, we're gonna get paid here because they're never gonna put us on that straight but furthermore guys developing a loose image like this is going to get you paid off in future hands i hope you see where we're going here let's move on to tip number seven which is to four bet bluff
buff your suited aces. Once again, guys, this is another aggressive strategy for serious poker players, and this has been a massive profit source for me in recent years. So basically, guys, everyone knows that you should be four betting most of the time with hands like pocket aces, pocket kings, ace king, and so on. I don't need to make a video telling you about that. You already know that. However, what you want to be doing is four bet bluffing versus good players. I want to be very clear about that. Do not do this against the fish because they're just never going to fold. You want to be doing this against the loose and aggressive regular players in particular and I love doing it with a hand like ace four of hearts for example and by the way I should explain what is a four bet well four bet is when there is a raise preflop a re-raise and then you are putting in another re-raise guys this is an incredibly strong hand in poker you're essentially drawing a line in the sand you're putting in roughly around 20 to 25 percent of your stack and you're basically saying to your opponent I am extremely serious about this hand this is going to cost you a lot of money this is going to be very very expensive for you you need to fold your hand right now and luckily most of the time they do however the great thing about baby suited aces like this guys is they have excellent equity and what i mean by that is odds to win even if this player has a hand as strong as pocket queens ace four suited has a little over 30 percent equity versus pocket queens it can also make the nut flush it can make the wheel straight and so much more. This is an excellent hand to go for the bluff here. So guys, once again, we're upping our aggression levels, just like in the two previous examples. This makes us much more difficult to play against. And most importantly, it gets you paid off when you want it in future hands because you're building this aggressive image. All right, guys, moving on to tip number six. Let's talk about how to play against the aggressive players now, because this is the player type that I get asked about by far are the most what do you do against those players who are always betting raising bluffing which is kind of what we've already been talking about in this video because this is the style of play that i teach and play myself so guys the bottom line is do not fight fire versus fire versus these players instead of letting them run you over what you want to do is make wide multi-street call downs with a hand like ace king for example on a turn of 10 8 8 jack we know that a loose and aggressive player is is off Often going to double barrel like we just talked about with hands like ace queen king queen nine seven seven six pocket nines pocket sevens running out of fingers pocket sixes and so on we are significantly ahead of many of these hands with ace king guys always remember that there are far more combinations of a hand like ace queen than there are of pocket sevens for example guys bottom line a loose and aggressive player is going to have a lot of bluffs in their range in a spot like this the solution is not to bluff raise them back because all that's going to do is fold out all their bluffs and it's going to get you snap called or re-raised when they actually do have the pocket tens or the pocket eights in a spot like this and you're just digging your own grave so guys what you do in a spot like this is simply make the call again that is what we call floating in poker do not let the aggressive players run you over and you're going to have a lot more success all right guys tip number five is to punish the limpers so i'm sure many of you are familiar with low stakes cash games tournaments like a $1, $2 live game, or perhaps a $2 tournament on the internet or a one cent, two cent cash game on the internet. If you played any of these games, you have no doubt noticed all of the limpers in these games. And that basically means people who just call the blind before the flop. Now guys, as I've mentioned before, you should literally view this as free money. You should literally view this as somebody has dropped some money on the table and it's just yours now. It's free money. It's up to you to go pick that up. So how do you do that? We, what you want to be doing guys is making a big raise especially when you're on the button as we know the button is the best seat ever created in the history of no limit texas hold'em and i'm going to have some more to talk about with poker seats in a little bit by the way but the bottom line guys is i do not allow people to limp my button i let them know it's going to cost them a lot if they want to get involved in a hand with me when i am on the button in particular so if you find yourself in a situation with king queen for example on the button and there are three limpers I would recommend raising it to a minimum of seven times the blinds so you're playing a one dollar two dollar cash game that would be two times seven fourteen dollars but guys a lot of people tell me that still that's not even enough so my answer is always very simple bump it up even more guys I was famous or infamous depending on who you talk to back in the day especially for raising crazy amounts in low stakes cash games online people laughed at me until they saw my results in those games 
times if people are not folding guys just raise it more make it 10x make it 15x heck if you're literally playing at a table versus a bunch of drunk maniacs just go all in when you have a really strong hand like king queen or ace king it is totally player dependent guys but the bottom line is do not limp along with everybody else all right guys moving on to strategy number four that all serious poker players need to know and that is to always set mind the fish so we just talked about fishy players limping now let's talk about what to do after the flop versus them and guys the number one thing i can tell you is i've literally made a career out of playing small baby pocket pairs specifically like pocket sixes and hitting a set against them because what is the one thing we know about fish they don't fold anything they will mortgage their house they will sell their car they're gonna call you down no matter what there is no way they're folding a hand like pocket aces they've never done that in the history of poker so guys in all seriousness of course you're only gonna hit your set around one out of nine times however the payoff is absolutely tremendous in those situations so if you are getting any kind of reasonable price before the flop you want to get involved with the these hands hit your set and make sure you fast play it do not slow play these hands when you hit your set i literally wrote an entire book about that crushing the micro stakes i'll link that up in the description below but let's move on to tip number three which is to turn your top pair into a bluff catcher guys let's talk about aggressive poker players once again and this has been one of my number one strategies to crush them in recent years and that is taking a hand like ace jack for example when i raise it up pre-flop i will often just check it to them if i hit something like middle pair as you can see here on the screen because what this often does is it gives them the rope to start doing what they love to do best which is trying to bluff you instead of betting into them or getting into one of these bluffing wars with them the best thing you can do guys is just let an aggressive player do what aggressive players love to do and just check call check call check call all the way most of the time they're just on some silly draw the math is in your favor and you're going to wind up winning a big pot by the end all right guys let's move on to strategy number two for serious poker players and i have never discussed this here on the channel before that is fixing your red line now let me explain what red line means in poker red line is essentially your non-showdown winning so basically what that means is the amount of money you win when nobody actually has to show their cards in poker now it is a little known secret that this is actually the secret to success in poker you don't get really good hands very often so it is absolutely vital that you are taking down more pots when you don't have anything now the two keys to success with improving your red line are stealing the blinds more often and bluffing more often as we've talked about a lot already throughout this video now the graph that you see on the screen there is from a poker tracker program which i use i'll link that up in the description below but basically the idea guys is you want your red line to be roughly around break even or slightly losing as you can see on this graph here is okay you don't want it to be massively losing but also this surprises a lot of people is you don't want your red line to be winning either because typically that means you're bluffing too much and therefore your green and blue line which indicate your actual winnings is going to be negative which is obviously not what we're looking for so guys if you're using a poker tracking software like this pay attention to your red line and try to get it roughly around break even and i think you're gonna have a lot more success all right guys my final tip for serious poker players is to choose your poker seat wisely guys i have mentioned in these videos before the second that i do not like a poker table i leave it's that simple i'm not there to make friends i'm not there to chit chat i am not there for the honor of battling it out with other world-class professionals i am simply there to make money that's why i got into this game i make no bones about it and therefore my rule is there is always at least one clear recreational poker player at the table in any game that I choose to play in or I leave. Now, if you follow that simple rule, you're already going to massively improve your poker winnings, but there are three additional rules that have helped me tremendously over the years. And that is number one, to have the fish on my right. Now, why is that important? Because you're going to have direct position on them in literally every single hand, which is a massive proven statistical advantage. You get to get more value bets in, more bluffs in, and save yourself money by folding when you think you're beat now something else that surprises 
surprises a lot of people is I also want the good regulars, specifically the tight and aggressive players and the loose and aggressive players also on my right. And the reason why guys is because you do not want these players on your left raising you every single time you enter the pot, making your life hell. You want the aggressive players on your right instead and the players that you want on your left are the nits. These are the passive players who literally only play hands like pocket aces and pocket kings. So when they raise you, you can just throw away your hand because you know they got the nuts and it makes poker a lot easier to play when you have the right players on your left and the right players on your right. Guys, I hope these nine simple strategies help. Like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you want to know my entire strategy to beat the small and mid stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.